All right, everyone. We have a Martin Mill Creek Rod here. This one's about five years old. I've had it for a couple years. I've only used it for three. Uh, a couple pieces missing off the back. The varnish is coming off pretty bad. Pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm going to rehandle this, put a new cork on it, and put a new reel seat, and the whole back end here. But what I'm going to try to show you to do here is I go fishing after work. My hands get pretty dirty. Sometimes I leave work without washing my hands, obviously, and the cork is pretty dirty on this thing. I don't really care about this rod, believe me guys. I don't handle my other rods this way. Good example is that rod right there, 17 years old. I've washed it a couple times, like I'm going to show you how this time. That is a brand new rod, never been touched, just unwrapped. So as you can tell, this works pretty good. It's going to go from that to pretty much that in three minutes or less. The trick to that, and as you can see guys, when they do cheaper rods, they fill in all the cork holes with wood filler. All the wood fillers come out of this one. What we're going to do here is we're going to wash this up, get it nice and clean so it'll accept wood filler. And then we're going to put some wood filler into it. And then we're going to sand it down. And I'm going to show you how you can pretty much make this thing look brand new. We're possibly going to be redoing it with the new cork that I'm ordering from Amazon. But we'll check it out and I'll show you a couple easy ways to do this. So this has worked for many rods in the past. I've never had one rod come apart or anything. As you can see, I've probably washed this rod 10, 15 times, and there's nothing wrong with that cork. 17 years old. My trick, OxyClean. You can use a no-name OxyClean, and pretty much any dish soap or detergent. So, I have a little bit of OxyClean in here. I'm going to take, put a little bit of soap in there, just to kind of make a slurry, and just literally... Put a little bit on this rod here, Oops. just rub it on the rod here and I'm going to show you here in a couple seconds what it's going to look like when it's all prepped. Okay, so pretty much that's your slurry, you're literally just going to rub it in here and as you do this it's pretty amazing, you can see my hands are going to look like I'm at work again because they're all dirty. I'm literally going to rub this for about 2-3 minutes you guys, I'm going to rub this Take a pause and I'll show you when I'm rinsing it. All right, here we go. That's what it looks like now. Let me give it a quick little rinse. And you'll see this thing. It's gonna obviously be a little darker because it is wet. But, give this a quick roll here. I'm not gonna do the greatest job on camera. Just gotta trust me here. But as you can see, that is no time at all, guys. And uh, look at that, looks nice and clean. You're not going to get it much cleaner than that without sanding it right down and changing the whole profile of it. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is we're going to let this dry and we're going to rub some wood filler into the cracks and then we're going to let that dry again and I'll go from there. So I'll see you on the next clip. All right, as you can see, the fly rod's all dry now, and that is really nice and clean. But the only problem now is, is you can see all the deep holes where all the wood filler used to be in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some wood filler to it. We're literally just going to squeeze it out on there. Try to pick a color that's close as you want to it. And then you're literally just going to be rubbing it into these holes push it into the deep holes make sure you get it in there nice and good and I'll come back here once I get it all rubbed in and I'll show you what it should look like all right and that's what it should look like it's gonna be the first coat there I'm gonna let that dry it might shrink in the deeper holes because it's gonna be partially wood filler and partially glue and water so it's gonna evaporate and probably shrink up a little bit so I'll check back here once this is dry I'm gonna leave it for a good 12 hours we'll check back and see if it needs another coat okay we're back here now with uh, the dried product so we're gonna be sanding that down quite a bit not a whole lot we just want to get down to the cork and we'll uh, just slowly take layer by layer off 
until we get down to the cork. We want to stop as soon as we start touching the cork. So I've already started on the one side here just to show you what you're looking for. So right there is how you want to kind of go. Just get it down to the cork surface there. Just lightly. Don't want to sand to the cork yet. We're going to get it down right to the cork and then we're going to spray it with some sealer just to seal all the wood filler in there. And then we're going to give it a light sanding just to get that sealer off the cork and give it some nice profile back and some smoothness and it should be done. Alright, and that's what it'll look like right before it's ready for some lacquer or some clear coat. I'll show you what I use here, but you can see how it's filled in all the cracks nicely. It needs a little more sanding or you can kind of leave it a nice tiger stripe like that. But I will sand it down and show you what it looks like after a clear coat here. Now we just sprayed it with a clear coat there. I just used some clear gloss trim clad. It works for everything it seems. So I just literally gave it just a quick shot. Shouldn't have to get any runs guys, just a little shot. Just you're pretty much sealing in the wood filler. It's gonna absorb this. And then we're gonna sand everything off, the rest of the wood filler and the cork. And then all you'll have left is the wood filler that'll be sealed into there. And remember guys, you're not going to be doing this to a nice sage rod or a nice Reddington or really expensive St. Croix or anything like that. Or a Winston. Because, well, their corks are a lot better. They're not going to do this. This is for the cheap rods if you just want to get a couple more years out of them. Or if you just have a sentimental value rod you want to hang on the wall. This will definitely make it look nice, but it's actually very practical and I've done it many times. And it works really well. You'll see it'll refinish almost better than new. And this is the finished clear coated fly rod. You're just going to have to sand it down just a little bit to get it through to the cork. And all that wood filler will be soaked in with that clear coat. And you will get to see a nice finished product. Alright, I got the reel handle in today. The reel seat, the end cap and the gasket. So we're going to be changing this out today. As you can see, I've already refinished this cork handle. Looks pretty good, but we're going to put on the new one. Well, we'll see how the old reel seat comes out. It might not tear up the handle, so maybe we'll try and put it on just temporarily to give you a little quick pick. And we're literally just going to be hitting this here with a heat gun for a couple minutes. I'll do this for a little while and I'll come back when it's off. Alright, so we got the heat gun going there. Never had a rod this hard to take off. Fenwick, you guys use some good glue. So yeah, definitely I'd use some channel lock pliers here. And then you just get all your glues heated up. It'll get all kind of gummy or powdery depending on the brand and what kind of glue they use. So yeah, you'll get the rod right out of here. Like I say, it's going to take a little bit of work, but it comes out. That part's garbage anyways. And then this will be the new piece that we're going to be setting into the reel. Which, if I want to use this piece, I'm going to have to just hollow out the reel a little bit, or the, should say the cork. But I'm going to actually be taking this cork off and putting the new one on, so we'll get to that in a second. So we have now finished this fly rod. So it's got a nice cork handle on it. And I've went ahead and finished that reel seat. I've lost the video, so there's no going back now. But this is the one thing you want to do. So before you finish this reel seat off and glue it in there really good, this is the time where you can take and you can put your fly reel on this rod and mount it with line and then you can find your balance point of the rod. And if you want to change that balance point of the rod, you can add a little bit of putty or you can add some JB weld when you're gluing this in here just to make it heavier than a two-part epoxy is. I use Gorilla Glue on this handle because Gorilla Glue is one of the lighter glues I find. It airs, foams up, so it actually isn't even as heavy as a two-part epoxy would be because it doesn't actually stay as a solid. It actually airs up and it's obviously very strong. I've never had a problem. But yeah, you can add your putty in the back if you want to weight it down so that it'll tip over easier when you want to fly cast. But normally, you just put some two-part epoxy or some Gorilla Glue on there tape that real seat handle on there or the end I should say and get that on there everything's dried up nicely it's all sanded down as you can see in these cheaper 
I don't know if I can zoom in here very good, but there's definitely a lot of filler in these cheap foam. Actually, I said foam because if you look at the cork here, it literally feels like a foam. It's squishy. It springs right back up. I think it is an actual cork, but it's, uh, it's crazy how soft this cork is. It might actually be more resilient, but if you do get a better rod, guys, you're going to get a way better cork than any of these other rods. You spend $100 on a rod, you spend $1,000 on a rod, you spend $2,000 on a rod. It doesn't matter. All the corks I've ever felt are a lot better than this one, but you get what you pay for. This was about 20 bucks on Amazon with a real seat. I just wanted to get this kind of going here. It was just a rod that just sat because the real seat was broken. Now when I take somebody fishing, once they get them into fly fishing, they want a good rod that's uh, going to last them a couple years till they get a new one they can have this one just part of getting people into the fly fishing and uh, seeing some smiles on people's faces also we're going to be doing some reviews here I got some different rods that I've uh, used for a little bit some are brand new some are a little bit used I've never done a review on them yet so we're going to do a review on them see whether it's worth spending a lot of money on a fly rod whether it's worth getting an entry-level fly rod probably going to get a cheap rod off Amazon. We'll do a test versus a couple of these rods here, which are pretty expensive rods. Um, I've bought a whole bunch of different fly lines here this year to try out. We have a scientific angler. This is about $140 fly line, which I recommend people buy. Once you get good at fly fishing, you can complement everything with a good fly line. You can buy a cheap fly rod. You can buy a cheap fly reel. The fly line is going to make the biggest difference. For once you get the use and once you get used to casting and once you get the feel of casting you'll definitely notice a difference with better fly line this is a scientific angler it's about a 45 50 dollar fly line it's pretty good this one's a lot better we're going to compare it to that one apparently match or max catch has um rio's brand of technology in their fly lines for really cheap this I believe was a 15 or $20 fly line. I got some other ones here. They're a nymph. So they got a tapered tippet coming onto them and they're orange. So you can see it a little better. I got a whole bunch of fly line backing, which your backing is not going to make a difference. I don't care what brand you buy. You don't need to buy a high quality backing. Most fish, especially in the rivers and streams, if you're under a five weight reel, you're probably not going to see the backing. It's mostly just to take up the space, but don't get me wrong. You can always uh, catch a nice big trout and it might get you into the backing. We also have some general brand. So we're going to try a whole bunch of different ones here. One thing I do recommend though is uh, match cats, match catch, max catch. Sorry. They got a tongue teaser in their name. This one here is uh, the seven to eight size reel it's supposed to hold and it actually holds a reel nicely I recommend getting these because you can actually have those over your rod while you're traveling if you want to go from stream to stream so this is a five or sorry a three plus reel and this is a five plus reel they have no problem fitting these but like I said this is a seven to eight size so make sure you guys upsize them if you're gonna order these off Amazon they're about 14 bucks definitely a good good thing to have they work very well and uh, they'll also keep the UV light off your fly line if you guys are gonna spend money big money on a fly line keep it out of the Sun it's just gonna downgrade it I'm sure they have a better UV inhibitor or something on the better fly lines but still you're just wasting your money if you're gonna leave your stuff just rot in the Sun the Sun's getting stronger the Sun likes to just destroy everything so keep everything out of the Sun we're also gonna be doing some leader reviews um, I've bought airflow leaders. I've bought Rio leaders. I've bought all different brands of leaders. They're about 10, 12 bucks a liter nowadays. This is a six pack and I believe it's like $7.99. So I'm going to try those out. They feel good. We're going to try them once uh, we can get on the water here. We're going to cast those out, catch some fish, and I'm sure they're going to last just as good. But yeah, that's the, uh, the review wrap up here so that's how you replace a rod if you want to just keep it going for a couple more years obviously you're not going to be doing it on one of these rods if you have one of these rods they uh every rod here's got a lifetime warranty other than a 25 year warranty 
um, that's, I believe, the way to go. I've never had to take a, a bottom end back to the factory. I've broken some tips off rods. I broke uh, the tip off this rod here. Actually, I bought it with a broken tip, this Orvis rod here, the Helios 3D. I called Helios and gave them the rod registration number. They sent me, and we're in Canada here, they sent me a rod tip within four business days. So if you ask me, that's definitely well worth getting the 25-year unlimited warranty. So that's what we're going to be doing here soon. We're going to be getting out on the water, doing some reviews, doing some rod reviews, reel reviews, line reviews, leader reviews, tipper reviews, fly. We tie our own flies here, so we'll show you different flies that work. And thanks for watching out this long, and you guys have yourself a great night.